2023 was the year savagery reigned supreme on screen. Brutal beatdowns, merciless humiliations, utterly disrespectful massacres. This was the year characters begged for mercy and received nothing but ice cold disrespect served up by the shovelful. We're about to dive deep into the most jaw dropping, disrespectful anime moments of 2023. Number 11, Blue Lock, Kira's Elimination. Literally kicking off this list with an anime that just about snuck its way into 2023, where its most disrespectful play happened in the first episode. Blue Lock was always going to be a wild ride. Its entire premise is taking the comfy sport wholesomeness of the power of friendship and shoving it down the drain with a battering ram. But man, poor Kira did not deserve the absolute bitch slap he got just for being a nice guy. Or, I suppose, bitch kick. Imagine, you're Kira, you're a rising star in football, you're handsome, smart, got crazy skills, but most importantly, you got a good heart. Aw, what a perfect protagonist. You even get to show off how much of a goody-goody you are by protecting the weaker players in your first trial. You're the hero. This is your moment, right? Wrong. Not only do you get your kindness rejected, but physically punted into your face in horrific, beautiful slow-mo. Just look at that face. That's the face of someone realizing, oh no, I'm in the wrong damn anime, aren't I? Blue Lock wasted no time setting the tone for what we were getting into. And for that, it deserves the first spot on this list. Number 10, Eminence and Shadow, the Atomic Menace. Ah, Sid Kage now. The Shadow, the Menace, the literal personification of cringe anime edgelord, except he's actually scary. This might be a bit of a cop-out, but there's truly no single scene in this show that best describes how much of a cocky, disrespectful bastard this guy is. Instead, you really just have to watch the whole show to paint the best picture of it all. Every move this kid makes is just the most wild, ridiculous thing, and it somehow works. 2v1-ing the strongest knights of crowbars while threatening to end the world? Check. Teleporting behind opponents, looking at their attacks, and lecturing them mid-fight? Check. This dude is what Gotham's criminals think Batman is, except remove all the smarts and keep all the emo one-liners. I don't think there's any other character in 2023 that fully embodies the word disrespect like the Eminence and Shadow does. Number 9. Jujutsu Kaisen. Toji flipping Fushiguro. Okay, we lied. There might be one other character. Toji, not Zenin Fushiguro, is a bonkers, balls to the wall, terrifying introduction to the JJK world. What's his ability? Strength. Just raw, ridiculous strength. And in the face of complex techniques, contracts, and many layers of red tape, Toji just waltzes through all of them. And really, some of his feats are pretty nuts. Beating the strongest sorcerer in the world in a straight fight and immediately looking for seconds? Check. Shooting a little girl in the head and being like, it's just business? Check. His actions were so crazy devious, he literally sent Getzo into an existential crisis that resulted in him becoming a villain. That's right. Toji was so nuts, he made a good guy give up on being good just by existing. And we're not done. Stomping the ground and using the broken earth as projectiles just by touching them? Taking a special grade cursed weapon used for blunt force and sharpening it into a spear? Being called back from the dead with a work visa and turning it into permanent residence through sheer will alone? Toji's got them all. And worst of all, the man doesn't respect his food. Kicking ass is one thing, but leaving all that delicious takoyaki just like that? Leaving food like that? Scum. Overall, Toji Fushiguro is him, and there's no denying that. Number 8, Jujutsu Kaisen, Gojo vs. Jogo in Hanami. We can't move on without bringing up another iconic scene from the Shibuya arc. Forget takoyaki, this is the meaning of playing with your food. Satoru Gojo vs. the two disaster curses really wasn't a fight. It was a beatdown, a brutal one. Gojo really looked at Jogo and Hanami and said, I'm not trapped here with you, all of you are trapped here with me. The two curses had everything going for them. They found a way to nullify infinity. They had a whole station of civilian hostages. They even had a whole train of transfigured humans. And it meant nothing. Between ripping off Jogo's arm or crushing Hanami to death just by walking forward, Gojo confirmed that even with both arms tied behind his back, he's unstoppable. But it's not even his actions that spelled this. Just look at his face. Look how much fun this man is having. That's not even madness. That's just pure uncaring joy. Go off, Gojo. Go off. Number 7. Demon Slayer. Moichiro vs. Gyoko. Who's gonna win? A centuries-old demon with supernatural powers and a thirst for blood? Or a literal child? Gyoko vs. Moichiro was one of the saddest fights of 2023, in that it was barely a fight. UFO Table definitely pulled through with incredible action, beautiful depictions of mist breathing, and a fascinating blood demon are from Gyoko. But man, it was just so, so short. Not only did Gyoko and Upper Moon, one of the strongest demons in the world, get killed so fast he couldn't even use all of his abilities, he got humiliated in the process. He couldn't land a single hit after the whole water pot fiasco. He was riled up and fuming half the time. He couldn't even see Mu Moichiro half the time. Oh, and this whole time, he's been getting absolutely verbally demolished by Moichiro. Moichiro's not even that good at trash talk. 
Gyoko's just worse. Man, he didn't even get the time to explore his own sad human backstory. Moichiro was just boom, cut him into a million pieces, dead mid-sentence. Even Gyoko didn't realize the fight was over until he was already fading away. Truly, one of the biggest L's of this year. But uh, hey, go Moichiro, right? Number 6. Mashal, Sonic Sword Chair Of course, we're gonna talk about our favorite super buffed wizard non-wizard Harry Potter parody. Mash takes it upon himself to single-handedly break down the entire magical system he lives in, quite literally through brute strength. No magic? Who cares when you got biceps? The premise alone is enough to earn a place on this list. But while Mashal is full of winning scenes overall, one of its most iconic moments has to be Mash's scuffle with Master Rain. A terrifying wall of giant partisan swords hurtling towards you like bullets? No, no. Forbidden Legos. Of course, these swords weren't gonna kill Mash, but for him to make a chair out of them was just plain disrespectful. Leave it to Mash Burn Dead to turn certain death into an Ikea run, and occasionally batting practice. Number 5. Bleach, Senjumaru. Alright, this one was really just a cold scene, but we can't not talk about Bleach here. Specifically, Bunkai's. Specifically, one specific Bunkai from one specific character, Squad Zero's Senjumaru. For an anime-only moment, they knocked this scene out of the park. With the debut of one of the most powerful abilities we've seen in the whole show, Shatatsu Karagara Shigara Minatsuji. And it's not even the fact that this move is strong. It's not even the fact that it has so many layers to it, it almost seems like a separate set of moves. It's not even that this one move wiped out the entirety of the Sternritter Quincy's, full of really strong, important characters. It's the fact that Senjumaru never even used it until now, because she felt like they weren't worth her time to do so. It was only when all the ducks were lined up in a row that she decided it was convenient, which means she's always had the upper hand, just never showed it. And that's pretty disrespectful. Number 4. Tokyo Revengers Taiju and the 100 Black Dragon Army vs. Mikey and Draken Tokyo Revengers is a show built on the subtle art of Black Air Force energy. All smoke, all fire. It's got jumpings, throwdowns, brawls, and bashings. Pretty much every kind of disrespect you can ask for. We've got 1v1s, 2v1s, 2v3s, and sometimes even 2v100s. That's why Season 2 brought in one of the most satisfying moments of Know Your Place by reminding us of just how crazy strong Mikey and Draken are. The Black Dragon Army was a formidable force in the shadows of the gang world, dominating through sheer numbers and headed by their now legendary beast of a leader, Taiju. I mean, they literally have a mansion. Every good supervillain has a mansion. They're the big bads. At least they're supposed to be. Until Mikey and Draken come knocking. All it took was a little visit from the two heads of the Manji gang. And in the time it took for Mikey to knock out Taiju with one kick, Draken and single-handedly wiped out the entire Black Dragon army with his bare hands. Sure, Taiju got up again, but all he woke up to was silence and white-clad bodies sitting in the snow. By the time he walked out the door, he'd already lost. If that's not a cold sentence, I don't know what is. Number 3. Hell's Paradise Nothing says disrespect better than getting an off-screen beatdown. It's at about the same level as having every possible advantage and still getting bodied effortlessly. Incredibly, Hell's Paradise shows off both in one of its first fights. Gabimaru the Goat versus the Mad Monk was on the surface set up to be a hype showdown, the first fight on the island. Gabimaru's strong, but his opponent is about three times larger than him. He's got armor, he's got strength, and he's got a literal arsenal of every kind of weapon possible. Bashers, cutters, grippers, you name it. And Gabimaru just has what he's always had, his body. This should have even the playing field, but oh boy did it not. Not only is the next frame Gabimaru walking away from the monk's corpse, not only is the corpse impaled sideways riddled with his own weapons, but Gabimaru did it all with his hands tied. In fact, literally the only takeaway from the fight was, hey Sagiri, his hands weren't tied, can I untie my hands now too? Rest easy Gabimaru, I don't think you need to. Number 2. One Piece – Gear 5 Luffy vs Kaido There's so much to say about Gear 5th that there's nothing left to say anymore. Someone else on the internet has already likely made a whole essay on it. The incarnation of the white-haired, hollering agent of chaos was one of the most anticipated moments not only in 2023, but in anime. And wow, was it an absolute joy to see brought to life. Every beat of the wild, wacky, reality-bending insanity of Toon Force was perfectly drawn. And of course, we got to witness one of the most disrespectful fights of the year. This is Kaido, ruler of Wano, leader of the Beast Pirates, Emperor of the Sea. He was a member of the Rocks Pirates, the strongest crew in the world. And even now, with his mythical dragon, Devil Fruit is the strongest creature in the world. He's unkillable. Literally, he's tried himself. He can't be beaten. That's how the story's supposed to go. So to see him being used as a jump rope is absolutely crazy. Luffy's Gear 5th was the definition of freedom. Bouncy castles, ping pong balls, moonwalking, hot air balloons. Luffy wasn't just 
beating Kaido, he was having fun doing it. And it's crazy to see Kaido, who just moments ago was this terrifying beast surrounded by lightning, literally beg Luffy to take this fight seriously. But no can do. Joy Boy is here, and he's here to stay. Number 1. One Piece Wi-Fi Hockey Finally, with the most recent piece of disrespect, we return to Wano. We also return to Shanks, who is not in fact in Wano. Which is why this scene was so wild. Driving away a marine admiral with the sheer force of Conqueror's Haki from hundreds of miles away. We've only ever seen an admiral look afraid twice in the whole series, and both involve Shanks' crew. Number one was Kizaru, who raised his hands against Ben Beckman, and the second was here, with Admiral Greenbull against Shanks. Except with Kizaru, at least the opponent was in the same radius as him. Not gonna lie, Green Bull stocks are a little low after this one. Fans were super excited to see what kind of person the mysterious new Admiral was. How does he fight? How strong is he? What's he like? The answer was, plants, pretty strong, and honestly, he's a bit of a brat. But he's still an Admiral, and watching him pee his leafy plants at just the feeling of Shanks' hockey was a little embarrassing. Oh well, when you're a forest man, it makes sense to make like a tree and leave. But man, this got fans so much more excited for Shanks. If he's this strong without even leaving his ship, imagine what would happen once he